Hi, welcome to this video in the MRDCL Understanding Concept Series. In this video, we're going to be looking at handling one particular type of hierarchical data. Now, hierarchical data is where you've got two different levels or types of data within the same file. You'll find the files relating to this video in the folder DAT101. All right, I'm going to start this video by actually looking at the data so that I can explain the problem more clearly and then we can find the solution to actually processing this data in the correct manner. So in here, we've got data that relates to respondent 001 and you can see in the first three digits there that is the serial number 001. So this record hasn't just got one line in it as you might expect. It's got one line here that relates to the household as a whole, and then a line for each member of the household, or each individual in the household. They're identified by a field in the fourth column, where one is data relating to the household, and all these ones below it, the twos, are for each of the individuals. So consequently, what this is saying is that household one, there's one record for the household as a whole, and then one for each of the seven members of the household in the following seven lines that I'm highlighting now. Whereas respondent number two down here has a household record and five individuals. Household three, on the other hand, has a household record but no data for the individuals. And number four here has a household record and two for the individuals in the household. So that's our data file, and we want to be able to process these two levels of data, one relating to the household and one relating to the, or several are relating to the individuals within each household. Now, we've got to look at how that might work within a script. So I'm going to open up. So we're going to look at how that might work within a script. So I'm going to open up the STP file that reads that. And whereas normally in a script, you start at start data and have all the variables running down to finish data and that all those variables apply to everything about a individual respondent and then effectively when you get to the finished data here that finished data statement is writing that record to the IDF and then it cycles back to the top at the start data reads the next respondent in the file processes that and finished data writes the next record to the IDF so eventually in the IDF or the intermediate data file, you'll have all the uh, records in there with one record written to the IDF per respondent. Now this is somewhat different. In this particular example, what we're going to do is we're going to write a record with a marker saying this is a type one for the four household members, sorry, the four household records, 001, 002, 003 and 004. But we're also going to write away a record for each of the individuals. So in the case of um, respondent one, there are seven individuals to write away. For number two, there's five. For number three, there's none. And number four, there's two. So that should effectively write away 14 individual records or 14 household members that we're going to write away. So we start here by having a serial number in one, two, three. Nothing very different about that. There's different ways of handling this. One of the ways to handle this is to use carved numbers. Now, these are fairly short records of less than 80 columns, which means you can use card buffers, a tool within MRDCL, to store the data. And what card numbers means is that I'm going to allocate 101 to 180 to the household record, 201 to 280 to each of the um, individuals in the household, and 9901 to 9980 I'm going to use for just handling the data and reading it in. And that'll become a little bit more clear in a moment. I could, if, if, I, had, if I wanted to handle this as card characters, maybe 10,000, where I process uh, in one to, into, into one to a thousand, maybe the household data, and 1,001 1, to 2,000, for example, each individual. But I'm not doing that in this case. So let's look at the distinct sections of my data stage and then go through each of those in some detail. Now the first section you'll see here is one that begins at read card and ends with go to read card. So what effectively is happening here, this section is going to read a line 
from my file and decide how to process it. So it's going to read the first line from the file, decide how to process it, then it'll read the second line from the file, process that, then the third one and the fourth one until it gets to the very last line in the file and it will process that. What, how will it process it? Well, it's going to have a statement in the middle here. We'll look at all the other statements in this section shortly. But it's going to say, depending on what's in 9904, if it's a 1, I'm going to send it to the household section. I'm going to put it in 101 to 180, from 9901 to 9980, and go to the household section. If it's a type 2 in column 4, I'm going to put it into 201 to 280 and send it to the individual section of the script below. And we're going to go through that in a little bit more detail in a second. Now we've got a section of code that relates to the household. And this is reasonably easy to understand. This is basically saying this is these are the variables here that apply to the individuals and everything about the household in total and the individuals within it. So this is their social economic group, A or B, and it's coming from 105 codes 1 and 2. And of course, the region has been picked up in 106, so that's putting people into North, Central and South. So this data in the household part applies to not only the household as a whole, but every individual within it. And at the end there, you can see there's a go to recap to work out how to go next. But we'll come to that flow in a minute. And then we get a section down here that relates to the individual. And all this information here relates to the individual and what their preferences were what types of film they watch and how often they go to the cinema. So that's going to be processed as the individual record. And then down the end here, there's a section where it says done. And that's going to, uh, going to accumulate the total number of visits to the cinema that that household makes between the people in that household. And that's in what's called the done section at the bottom, what I'm calling the done section at the bottom. And then we're going to finish the data and we're going to go into some tables we'll look at those in a little while but there's four distinct sections in here then there's the reading the data there's the household section the individual section and what I'm calling at the moment the done section when perhaps you accumulate things across all of the individuals in the household to get some total data that relates to the household so let's start working through this now the most complex bit is this first bit but let's go through that now so first of all, I'm defining a variable called all cards and all cards has been set to two empty bits. So it's the same as saying that all cards equals F comma F. Now what I'm going to use all cards for is to, to check which types of data I get. The type one, remembering that type one is the household, type two is the individual. So that when I get to the end of the record, I can check whether I've got a household record and whether I've got any individuals. So that's the purpose of that variable, to accumulate that data across all of the uh, lines in the file relating to each serial number. At read card is just a marker in the file telling MRDCL where to go to when we process each record. We'll see that as we go through in a minute. This line of code here is going to tell MRDCL to read a line from the file and put it in 9901 to 9980. Now, usually a project doesn't have a read statement, but if you've got a card character, if you've got an ASCII data file and you've got card characters 5000, you could after that line put in read $1-5000 and it would manually read that line for you. It would be a redundant line of syntax because the card character statement does all that work for you. But here I'm actually choosing to read a line into the file and I'm going to store it in 9901 to 9980. Now why is that? That's because these, this statement here means that I'm setting up empty fields in 101 to 180, which I'm going to use for the household, 201 to 280, which relates to the individual, and 9901 to 9980, which are just being used to process each line in the file as I read it. So I'm reading the first line in this file. I'm storing it in 9901 to 9980 rather than perhaps 1 to 80. This little bit of code on the end, erec equals done, is a, is a, is a special 
command in MRDCL that tells it to go to the done section when it's already finished a record. We'll see that in action in just a moment. This line of code picks up the type from 9904. So even though it's been keyed in in column four, the type, let's go back to our data file. So even though this type here has been keyed in as one and two on the fourth field, it's now stored in 9901 to 9980, which means that the fourth field is in 9904. And I'm picking up a one and a two, so I know which type it is that I'm picking up. We'll ignore duke cards in the next line for a second. Let's come back to that in a while. In all cards, in all cards, what I'm doing here is I'm accumulating all the card types that I've got as I go along all the card types. So this card for the first record will be a one. All cards, if you remember at the top here, starts as empty. And so what it's going to do in all cards, it's going to accumulate all the card types that it finds or all the types it finds for respondent number one, first of all, and then number two. So as it's read in the first line, it will set all cards to one because this card is one as well at this stage. There's a check in here to make sure this card is not multi and it's not blank. If it's blank, we would want to know about that. We expect every line in that data file to have something in column four to denote whether it's a household record or an individual record. Now we decide what to do with that. If 9901 is a four, then, so everything that applies, everything that, that, that applies to that condition will carry on until the end if, I want to move it from 9901 to 9980, or copy it actually, not move it, copy it, from 9901 to 9980 into 108 to 1080. Then I want to go to household and to process it. However, if it's a type two or a code two on 9904, I want to move it or copy it from 9901, 9980 into 201 to 280. Go to the chunk of code for individual. And if it ever gets here, it means that something's gone wrong. In fact, it, it, perhaps if it finds a type three, which it shouldn't find, it's listing out for me that it's an invalid card that's found or an invalid type that's found. So effectively, if it's a type one, it's going to branch off to whole, H hold. If it's a type two, it's going to branch off to individual. So what will happen here is that it'll read in the first line in our file, which is the household. It will go to here. It will set the variable I top cinema to zero. It will dummy define all fav film to three empty bits. But it will pick up from 105 because that's what we've copied now from 9901 to 9980 or 9995, the SEC and label it AB just like any other variable, picking up codes one and two. It'll pick up the region from the sixth field. so. Let's look at that. So it's picking up the region from the sixth field when it's type of one, and then only when it's type of one. And at the end of doing that, it goes back to read card to decide what to do next. So that what will happen in the flow of things here, let's when it reads in the first record, it will read this, it'll read this line here. This line will send it to household, so it will then branch off to down here, it will do this work, and then it will go back to recode. And that read card, it will now read the second line in my file, which is this line here, which we can see is a type of two, with two on the fourth column. And it will process that. And when it gets to this line here, it's going to send it to the individual piece of code. So it's sending it to different places, depending whether it's a household or an individual. It hits the individual uh, or indiv statement. The first thing it does is zero to finish. Now, the reason it zeroes to finish is that we don't want to have any data from the previous individual uncleared. Variables only get cleared by default when you go through finished data. So if we have something hanging over from the previous individual, when we're on to the second and third individuals, we would, if we're not careful, hold data from the first or second individual as we go into the subsequent individuals. So zero to finish is something you always should have when it's possible that a level has more than one of that type. So there's only one household record, but as we noted earlier, they can have any number of individual records. 
So here we define the gender of the person, which is stored in 205. Remember, we used 201 to 280 to store the individual data. We record how many times they went to the cinema in 206 to 207 in the variable I cinema. We accumulate in I top cinema the number of occasions they went to the cinema. So this is going to be the total visits by the family to the cinema. So if respondent one over here says that they went three times, the next one went two times, the next one went five and so on, we would be adding that up and saying, well, at this stage it's three, with these two it makes five, with these two it makes ten, this one's none, and so on, and we'd get a total for the family coming out in ITOP Cinema. Remembering that ITOP Cinema was set to zero when we went through the household piece of code, because when that's a new uh, member, a, a new household record, we want to set it to zero. In fact, the finished data would do that for us, but I'm just being cautious. In here, I'm defining from iCinema how many times the individual goes to the cinema. So this is the individual now, not the um, total in the family. And then I've grouped it as none once, twice, three to, three to five times, six to ten, and so on. In Fab Film, we're picking up their fam favourite comedy, uh, uh, sorry, their favourite film type, comedy, romantic, and other. So that's the data in column eight of the individual record. And here we've got all defined, all fab film types. So again, across the family, we can find what film types they like as a family. So if three members of the family like comedy, nobody likes romantic, and one likes other, all fab film, after it's processed, all the individuals for that family would be set to uh, true for comedy, false for romantic, and true for other. So that's all fab film. Now we're going to set a variable called level, and I'm setting it as false comma true. So what that means is that nobody goes in the first category, but everybody goes in the second. And I've labeled it household and individual. So what effectively we're doing here, we're saying as, as we're in the individual piece of code, I want to force them into the second piece of code, a second bit of the, of the variable for individuals. I'm, I'm labeling it. And I'm writing it away. Now, once you've got a write command, the write command replaces what the finished data statement does, and that's choosing what to write away. So that write command is going to write away each individual, and it's going to write away the value of level equals two for each individual. Now we come to the done part of code. Now, how do we get to done? Well, I mentioned earlier that done's a rather magic piece of code in MRDCL. What that's saying is, if it reads a record in and we happen to hit a new serial number or the bottom of the file, hold that record or hold that line in the file and finish processing the previous one. So what's happening here, if we look at our data again, it's reading this line and it's going off to the household code or the H, H hold code. It's reading this line and going to the individual and writing the individual away. It's doing the same for the second member of the individual. It's writing that one away, and the next one, and the next one, and the next one. So we read in the seventh member of the household and write that away. So at this stage, at the end of processing this line, we have seven level two records written away. And then it comes to this line, and it says this is a different serial number. So because it is, I'm going to branch using erec and go to done. And I'm going to hold this second respondent just for a moment. So now it goes down to done, and it processes the end of uh, respondent number one, and it says top cinema, the total number of visits the family made to the cinema was picked up from iTOP cinema as 0 to 20 and greater than 20, and there's the, the labels for that. Also here at the end, it's making a check and it's saying that if all cards is not one, there is no card one, and that's an error. So we should always expect everybody to have a household record, although we may have no data for any individuals in the household. Now we define the level variable as true for the first bit and false for the second, and we write it away. So effectively what we've got here now at this point is we've written away 
a level one record for the household as a whole. So actually respondent one gets written away eight times, once for the household and seven times for the individuals in the household. I missed one thing earlier and that's what this is doing and this is checking we haven't got a duplicate card. So this is saying that all cards and this card that we would expect dupe card to uh, not be blank and if it is, it's sorry, to be blank and if it is, it's, uh, it's an error. Now actually I think here as two is duplicate, if dupe card is a one, it should actually be an error. So I should correct that and say if dupe cards are one, it means they've got a second type one, which is wrong for the same serial number that is. So going back to our data, we can now, having gone through finished data, we can actually process this record. And I remember it said it, you remember it, I said that it ha held over that record. It now can proceed with the second respondent and it can decide, okay, it's a household record, branch to the household, go through, read in the other members of the household, branching to individual each, indiv indiv each time and writing away the household at the end. Whereas with respondent three, it'll never get to indiv because there's no individuals in the household, there's just a household record and on it will go. So that's how it's handling that data. Now let's look at what it's doing in practice. What I've done now, if I move down to the tables, you'll see some interesting things. So the first thing you'll see, and this is just something I always do, I call my first table, when I've got levels of data, I call it table zero. You might call it something else but I call it table zero, and that table gives me a table of what levels I've got in the data, or analysis of the variable level. Let's run it, and let's see what we've got. And this tells me that I've got four household records, which I know is correct, and I've got 14 individuals. The percentages are irrelevant, which is absolutely right, because I've got four different serial numbers, one, two, three, four, and if I remember correctly, Respondent 1 had 7 individuals, Respondent 2 had 5, Respondent 3 had 0, and Respondent 4 had 2, which gives a total of 14 individuals in the household. Now let's return to the script and look at the tables. And now you can see my tables are filtered on level for different chunks of, of code. So here I'm saying unless left it it's a level of one, so unless it's a household record, I could have said if level not one, go to in dibs. So unless it's a level one, I don't want to process the record because remember on the IDF, I've now got 18 records, four um, household records and 14 individuals. So unless it's level of one, I don't want to go into these tables here. So these are going to be based on the four household records. And these tables are going to be based on the 14 individuals. So these gender, cinema, and so on. And of course, it's important that you analyze each variable at the right level. There's nothing wrong with analyzing anything from level two by level one, provided you analyze it at level two. If you analyze something from level one and level two together, one by the other at level one, you will get wrong data. You'll just, in fact, get the analysis of the last level two record it happened to read, which would be erroneous. So let's look at our tables and see how they match up. We'll run them again. We'll go to our tables. There's our check table again. We look at table number one now, and you can see it's based on four people. Two were uh, A's and two were B's. So they have two had code one and two had code two for the region. Two had north, one had central, and one had south. Visits to the cinema as a family, so one record had none, that was record number three who didn't have any individual data, and one had two, and one had 14, and one had 18. Let's go and check that to see if we like that. Let's open up the data file once more. So let's just check that. So if we look at the fields that pick up the number of visits, respondent number one had three, two, five, which is 10, one more is 11, one more is 12, and one, the two more is 14. So respondent one had 14 visits. Respondent two had 10, five, one, one, and one, which is 18 visits. Respondent three had no visits, and respondent four had two. If we take that back to the table, 
that looks absolutely correct to me. There's our four respondents. One had no visits, one had two, one had 14, and one had eight. So it looks as though this has worked. And you could perform a similar check to check that the film types that are liked amongst any of the family members would tie up with the data in the same way. When we come to the next tables that are filtered on individuals, we get a base of 14 now, eight are male and six are female. And again, if we look at the individual records here, here they are, there's the individual data. And if you count down the ones and twos on the type twos, you will find that we've got eight males and six females. And so on for the other uh, data there. This is the data from the individuals, their number of times they've been to the cinema. And that will again match up with the data on the level two records. So there we are. We've gone through a script here which handles two levels of data. MRDCL can handle more levels of data. There's no limit to the number of levels of data it can handle. I have known it to handle six levels of data on one occasion, but there is no limit to the number of levels it handles. It handles it by controlling how it reads the records, controlling how it writes the records, and then filtering on the level you want. Having done a check table without a filter, filtering on the level you want in the analysis in the table stage. So that completes this video on handling hierarchical data of one particular type. There's another video following which handles a different layout in terms of data for handling hierarchical data. Thank you.